Welcome to DTV. I'm joined by new Melbourne Manager of Football Operations, Josh Marnie. And Josh, uh, congratulations on the new role. Been here for a few years now. Your uh, roles have changed a fair bit. You originally came across as an assistant coach with Dean Bailey. Uh, what's the journey been like for you at Melbourne? Yeah, it's been uh, an interesting journey. Um, I think, um, like a lot of people, when, you, when you're playing, you don't necessarily see yourself going to, into coaching. And um, you know, I got the opportunity through Dean Bailey to, to go straight into coaching, which was which was terrific at the time. And uh, throughout my whole playing uh, career, I'd always studied outside and and um, you know, did an MBA uh, when I was coaching. And it got to the stage where I was starting to get more excited by how how the club runs and from the business point of view and how the AFL works. And when an opportunity came up a couple of years ago to move more into administration, I jumped at that opportunity and you know, I've uh, just taken on more responsibility each year and, and as I said, you know, really excited by the challenge ahead. You've uh, taken the role at a pretty important time for the club and also a very busy time, even though no games, there's plenty happening off the field and uh, of course free agency and trade about to to kick off and already a couple of names bandied about with Melbourne. Um, can you sort of talk about how the clubs first of all going to approach the uh, free agency and trade period? Yeah, it's interesting uh, when, you, when the season finishes a lot of people would think oh, you should you, you take holidays now and you must have a period of time off but you know, people in, in this role and also uh, Todd Viney in the role that he's doing and, and Jason Taylor, this is you know, the really the busy time uh, for the footy club and uh, we have to make some changes to our playing list, uh, we have to get better on the field and uh, we'll be very active during the trade period. Uh, I've already spoken about our, our, um, our aim is to get some midfielders in. You know, we're, we're very comfortable with our tall forwards and our tall defenders. We think that you know, they're, they're as competitive with any other comp, uh, team in the comp, but our midfield, we have to add some depth to that, so that's been our focus. Uh, I've had a lot of discussions with clubs over the last three or four weeks. You know, we meet now daily uh, as, as a list management group and you know, that's going to be our focus going in the trade period. You know, pick two at the moment, um, if, if the right deal is there, it's, it's certainly on the table as, as well as every other pick we've got. Yeah. A few names have been linked already with Melbourne. Um, Heath Shaw, uh, Dustin Martin, Darren Jolly and Daniel Cross, those guys have been mentioned in the media. What are those uh, guys, are they sort of in the thinking at all for Melbourne? Oh, they're all, they'll probably fill different roles. Mm. Um, you know, probably Daniel Cross and Darren Jolly at the end of their careers. Um, so. And there may be an opportunity for those guys. Heath Shaw obviously still playing some, some really good football and Dustin Martin still very young into his career. You know, we don't shut, it, shut off any player. Um, you know, if we think they're going to help our footy team um, and strengthen us and make us better, you know, we're certainly open to that. Um, but whenever you're looking at bringing a player in, it, it works out you know, what is the cost, what do you have to give up, um, how much money are they going to be on. So you've got to, there's a lot of factors going into selecting a player and getting a trade done. Uh, just touch on pick number two, which is on the table. You're sort of looking for, for midfielders, which has been strongly sort of talked about, or, or perhaps a best available sort of player. What, what sort of uh, in the mix there? Oh, our focus will be for midfielders, and you know, we understand the value of pick two. So mm. we've got probably a short list of uh, three or four players through the AFL that would probably be, be worthy of pick two. And you know, if, if clubs are willing to um, part with those players, you know, it's definitely an opportunity. Yesterday was a great day for the footy club with uh, Jack Watts re-signing for another three years. Uh, Cole Sylvie is just still in the mix, just considering his future. Mm -hmm. uh, where's he at at the moment? Yeah, f first of all, for, for Jack Watts to sign on is, is a really good sign for the footy club. He obviously took his time during the year, which, which he had every right to do, um, and to sign on for three years shows that you know, he, he's starting to see the club moving forward. You know, we also uh, saw him improve in the second half of the year, and he's played a variety of roles. And uh, you know, Ruzi is very keen on him to, to look at him through the midfield, so that's a great opportunity for Jack. Yeah. Um, Cole Sylvia, as well, is a, is a required player for us. We think that he um, will help with our midfield. He's shown some better consistency this year. Uh, so again, he's he's got an offer on the table from us, and he's taking his time. He's a free agent this year, so he'll, he'll have other, other offers from other clubs, no doubt. Yeah. And you know, we're hoping that he can he would like to stay as well. Already a couple of new appointments at the club with uh, Ben Matthews and. Um Brett Allison having joined and, and Brad Miller, former Demon, back at the club. Um, you talk about their sort of roles and, and other people that you're looking to bring in. Yeah, so there's going to be a, a fair um, turnover in, in the coaching mm. um, department. You know, we've had uh, you know, six coaches move on for, for different reasons and um, often when a new coach comes on board he likes, likes to bring his own team with him. So um, you know, we wish all those coaches all the best and hopefully they get other opportunities um, at other clubs or 
uh, other industries, whatever they want to, want to go into. Um, but yeah, we've got some uh, exciting appointments. Um, Brett Ellison's obviously experienced at, at Sydney Swans as a development coach. He's also worked as a line coach at the Kangaroos. So you know, he, he may fulfil a, a, a line coaching role for next season. Uh, ben Matthews is recently out of the game. Uh, obviously uh, a long career with the Sydney Swans. He's been up the Gold Coast as a development coach. Again, he'll work in, in development and as a line coach uh, for next year. And we've got an, uh, Brad Miller also came on board, obviously had experience of, of coaching Brad for a number of years, um, a great character, always had great leadership qualities uh, through his, his playing days. He's done all the coaching courses and you know, we're, we're more than happy to, to give him the opportunity to start his coaching career. Of course, the, uh, the senior assistant that's been talked about a fair bit as well. Um, how close is that uh, being announced for these? Yeah, so we've, uh, we've spoken to three or four candidates at this stage. Um, there's another couple that we'd like to speak to. Um, obviously, we see it as an extremely important role, and you know, if it gets announced in the next, in the next period of time, you know, that would be, that'd be great for us. And just back on your role, uh, how's it sort of work in terms of uh, what departments you're working with at the footy, footy club? Yeah, so uh, my role is uh, looking after you know, the medical and fitness and conditioning area, as well as list management and recruiting and the administration uh, side as well. So, And Paul's uh, responsibilities around the, the coaching and the, the development. So that's where it, um, it's split up as in terms of the footy department. You had a great footy story as a player. I mean, how do you sort of see your mark now away from, from playing? Do you, do you see yourself having a bigger impact away from the, from the field? I think as you, as you take on more responsibility, obviously you can have a bit more of an impact on mm -hmm. things that happen at footy clubs. but. Again, I think the, the best clubs just have a, a great group of people. It's not just uh, one person who turns things around and that's what we have to do as a footy club. Everyone's got their role to play and if I can just play my little role in, in assisting this club in, in getting back to you know, up the ladder and earning some respect in the AFL industry, well, well we'd be very happy with that. All right, mate. Well, great chatting and uh, best luck for, for your new role. It's been fantastic having you at the club for a few years, but uh, a much bigger role now. And, uh best wishes for 2014. Thanks, man. Good on you, Mark. Okay.